Hey everyone, today's going to be a little bit of a different video for you. Um, people have asked about our electrical systems, and so I'm going to do a, a complete review of the existing uh, solar panel system that I have, and then I'm going to go into an upgrade uh, to make it even better. So, uh, most of the uh, electronics are behind this panel here. And let me bring in for a closer look. So before I get too far ahead of myself, I want to discuss why I'm making the changes I'm, I'm making and why I changed it originally from factory. So factory comes with a 100 amp deep cycle battery, which means that you get about 50 amps of usable service out of it. Now when we took it to Arizona, it was still winter time and we ended up running the heater occasionally at night. The uh, it would work fine for, I'll say, a night, barely two nights, but after that you're talking a dead battery and you better be finding your generator or plugging it into shore power because the truck battery just wasn't sufficient to charge it up, you know, driving several hours or something like that. You'd have to do a significant drive to get that battery back up. In fact, one time we had gone to the store bought a bunch of groceries, came home, and the refrigerator was off because the battery was dead. So this was a problem, and I needed to fix it. So as I bring you here into our, our little cubby, you really don't see too much going on in here because it's behind the panels, which I'll remove in just a second. But what you do have access to is a battery disconnect switch here. You have a charger disconnect switch here, which will disconnect you from the AC. Here's the charge unit here. We have a, uh, a solar disconnect here, and a utilities disconnect here, and a utility plug here, which I've, which I've made so that I can plug in my uh, air compressor. Um, you can see a little blue light here and the little window there and currently it shows that uh, the solar is doing a bulk charge because uh, it's still early in the morning and it's doing some charging but that would be the status LED of the uh, solar system. Let me pull off these panels now and I'll show you what's behind the scenes. You've got the MPPT controller 100 slash 30 that's 100 volts at 30 amps is, is what they're capable of running its output comes through a fuse and into a DC distribution block which which feeds most of the trailer. Um, in here is also the lithium battery which is a hundred amp lithium battery. So as I mentioned um, going from a deep cycle hundred amp battery which has about 50 amps of usable service life, a hundred amp lithium battery you can get a full hundred amps out of this battery and I've blocked it in here pretty tightly so that it won't vibrate or anything like that now you know the original batteries come on the hitch of a trailer and because of the cost of these batteries as well as their temperature sensitivity I've placed them inside this compartment to keep the temperature stable as well as to keep the thieves away and the, uh, to make the cable lengths as short as possible, which improves its overall efficiency. So this is my current system, and it works absolutely marvelous. We can run anything we want at night, being 12 volts that is, as much as we want. And in the morning, you know, the battery's maybe at 90%. It's still virtually full. And, uh, you know, I actually made a, a test. I ran it for several days, and I only got to about the 50% mark. Turned the solar back on, and it charged it within, I don't know, four hours or something like that. So it charges really quite rapidly now, so I no longer even worry about how much power I have. Am I going to run out of power and this type of thing? So it's, it's been really, really nice. However, however... The one thing that uh, we can't run today is anything at 110 volts because I do not have an inverter, um, which means you can't watch a TV, you can't use a microwave, 
Um, that's really about it, actually. The TV and the microwave. So uh, I'm going to rectify that situation. And my plan is we're going to add another battery into this compartment. As well as we're going to change out the battery charger that's here. And we're going to put a combination battery charger and inverter in this, in this location here. So uh, let's get to it. Let's roll up our sleeves. So here we are up on the roof where I've placed uh, three solar panels. They're 170 watts each, which has been powering the system fantastically. So to rectify the problem of feeling insecure about the mounting of these, I actually took off the ceiling inside the travel trailer and these front ones here are actually screwed into an additional piece of plywood with a nut, with a lock washer, with a Loctite, etc. So there's a big square piece of plywood that's sitting be between the exterior roof and the interior roof that these solar panels are really mounted to. That made me feel a lot better about the fact that they won't get ripped off the roof you know, when a big semi truck or something goes through, you know, and you get that big wind burst. The other thing that I've done, which I think is pretty unique, is you'll notice this, uh, this sloping piece of plastic on, it's on three of the sides, not all four. But I just went to my local plastic supply place, bought some plastic. It's, uh, it's, it's really just sitting there. So across the bottom here, I used your basic die core lap sealant, and that's what holds the bottom in place. Across the top, I used just a black silicone, and they're on there quite tightly. The, uh, the trailers made it to Alaska and back without any issues at all. Now, let me show you the back because there is a trick to mounting these solar panels, at least on a 19 RLE. So on the back, the normal place to put your brackets is on the side right here. But what will happen is, again, they don't go into any decent support underneath. And in the back, you can't remove the ceiling from inside the trailer to add additional support. But what I found is I put some here. And if you look closely on the roof, it's hard to see on this one. Um, there's a, there's a seam right here in the plywood or whatever it is. And uh, there's, a, there's solid structure underneath here where you could put some additional brackets here. So sorry, I didn't, uh, I didn't film any of the actual installation, but I'll do a detailed review of what it looks like completed. This first photo is the two batteries sitting side by side now. The red lead, of course, is your positive lead, and there's a fuse right there. On the left side, um, the black battery cable comes up into a current sensor, and that powers the Victron 712, which allows you to see the battery conditions, how much you're drawing, how much you're charging, etc. That's, that's a real useful feature to put into your trailer. And from there it goes over to the, uh, to the bus bar, which is the negative side of the bus bar. You may notice that the battery on the left has a lot of vertical space in it, and the battery on the right has pretty limited space. And that's because I built a shelf mm -hmm. that goes across the front of the trailer there. So here's the same photo taken from a different angle. And at this point, I've installed the two vibration dampeners. That's the white structure sitting above the battery. That really sandwiches the batteries between the floor and the ceiling. Or on a 19 RLE, that would be the bed. Um, but it stops them from moving in a vertical direction. So I've got them boxed in there quite tightly where left and right they can't move, side to side they can't move, and up and down they can't move. I put them in there very rigidly because, you know, as the trail, trailer bounces down the road, 
Um, I don't want to put any undue stress on any of the wiring, etc. That's that's in there. Pictures here are the uh, the vertical supports to stop the, the batteries from moving vertically, uh, it, going over a bump, etc. And you'll notice they are quite different from each other. And that again is because of this uh, shelf that I have in the trailer there. Uh, these are fully removable. You take off the side panel and these things just slide right out and from there you can just slide out the batteries. So everything's built in such a way that it, it comes apart really quick if you need it to. Just pull off the side panels, you have full access. To stop the batteries from moving left and right horizontally, between the two batteries, you see on the bottom there a piece of wood. And, you know, just to be safe, I put a spacer across the top of the batteries really because the positive and negative are fairly close right there and I didn't want any chance of these two terminals touching each other so that uh, wooden block in there will prevent that from occurring and then once you put those vertical supports in nothing's moving. I did not make any changes to the original wiring of the compartment between the solar panels and the bus bars and fuses the auxiliary jacks across the top. So nothing really changed on this side. Really the biggest thing was was mounting the uh, the Victron 2000 there as well as adding an additional battery. This shows the finished look as you open the door and look into it. Pretty clean installation I feel. Um, everything's well protected so I can be pretty rough and throw things into this cabinet and I won't worry about you know, crossing up some wires or something to that effect. So now let me go through a detailed explanation of the schematic of this. Um, at this point, uh, I will say that I am not a licensed electrician and that uh, anything you do of this nature is upon yourself and I'm not responsible for it. So I specifically haven't told you what size wires and stuff like that because those are really specific to your installation and length of cable runs and this type of thing. But again, this is for information only to give you an idea of, of how I've solved my problem. But uh, by no means this is a specific recipe as to how to do it. This is, this is for information. So looking at the schematic here, on the upper left we have the three solar panels in parallel going through a 40 amp solar disconnect or breaker and it, it works for both. It's a circuit breaker and I, you can also use it as a disconnect. From there it goes into the solar controller. Uh, the outputs of the solar controller you can see go through a fuse, another 30 amp fuse, and the ground goes straight to the ground. Now starting at the battery, in my case now there's two 100 amp batteries in parallel. The positive lead goes through a 300 amp fuse and a battery disconnect. The battery disconnect and that fuse are very important. Don't forget these in your installation. And they go to my positive bus bar. On the negative side, it goes through the current sense, which I showed you in the battery compartment, and it goes to the battery monitor also. That goes to the negative bus bar. The short power connection goes directly into a surge protector and has a uh, surge power AC monitor there located inside the trailer. The output of the surge protector goes two different directions. Uh, going straight down it goes through that 30 amp on off switch which powers the Victron. The Victron has two different outputs. So the black and the red are your 12 volts and uh, they go to the 12 volt bus bars. They're either charging the battery or using energy out of the battery. The green and the black go up to a changeover switch which allows me to essentially go directly to the 30 amp exterior or I can turn the system off or I can switch it the other way and it will use the Victron power. Um, the Victron and, and that switch is probably redundant. It really is. 
The Victron itself is such an intelligent uh, inverter charger. You can actually tell it that you want to use only 20 amps from external and you want to make up the difference using your battery or vice versa. It's very flexible in its design. Anyways, the output of the changeover switch goes to the original AC connections in the AC distribution panel of the trailer. And that is the full schematic. I hope you found this information useful. Please hit that like button if you did. If you're interested in following along on some of our other travels, we just completed an Alaskan trip, and prior to that was an Arizona trip, and in uh, another month or so, we're going to head, uh, head down south again, and we're going to try and make our way all the way to Florida. So follow along if you'd like. Take care. Bye.